All right, everyone, here we go. This is day 30. I'll talk a little bit more about it uh, as I progress here. And once you start coming online, uh, just put your comments in or the questions in the comment section and I will try to respond. If you're watching this on the Westside Christian Fellowship Facebook page, you might have to pop onto my page and uh, ask a question there. Um, even though we're cross-pollinating, I think I can only see questions coming in from my page. So anyway, going to answer a few that came in. Um, just an update, day 30. As many of you know, I'm doing primarily just water only. Um, and the reason I talk about the physical benefits, um, physical benefits more than the spiritual right now, is because the physical are happening now. I mean, it's just amazing. And the spiritual are often... Often you'll see it after a fast, um, but also spiritual uh, things that are being done are also personal. So a lot of times you don't share those things. But I will say spiritually, uh, I've, I've never woken, waken up, woke up with such a, a just a desire to see God, a passion to read his word, um, a, just worshiping. So usually just springing up around 3 or 4 a.m., and a couple hours just worshiping in the Word of God, and and it's incredible. So spiritually, it's been great in that area, but spiritually, it's been very tough, too. Anybody ever feel like giving up? Well, I've had to deal with that. Mainly day 25, 26, 27 were really hard. Sometimes just laid down for a few hours and, and really remembered why uh, I was doing what I'm doing, what's on, on, line, on the line for our nation. Uh, interesting, about midway through my fast, uh, Justice Alito, uh, they leaked what his thoughts were on Roe v. Wade, and that's actually been one of my prayers on that. And AB two 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 three here in California. Uh, granted, I won't. I, I don't know if that has any significance, but it is interesting that those are the things I'm praying for. That we've grown so corrupt and so wicked as a nation. So spiritually, there's some mountaintop experiences, but there are some valley experiences, and that's where you got to stay focused on the power of the made up mind. Lord, I'm seeking you in my weakness. God, I am strong because I'm relying on your strength. So that verse has meant a lot to me. Uh, so again, if you guys have uh, any questions, just put those in the comments. I'll try to get to them. And so, you know, I, I I did expect more physical, I mean, spiritual highs, man, like walking on clouds all day and just the power of the Holy Spirit upon my life. But the physical affects the spiritual. So when I'm detoxing, cotton mouth, don't feel well. You know, the, the toxins in the, that are stored in the fat are being released, um, and, and you just don't feel well. And so it's hard to, to, you know, just be on a spiritual high when you're not feeling good physically. They often in, are inter, interwoven. Um, but there are some, some great times, but I'm actually focused on he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Uh, it's in the perseverance. It's in the fortitude. It's in the strength. It's in delayed gratification. And faith is the evidence of things not yet seen. So, I'm actually, to me, fasting is planting the seed uh, in the soil of a broken, humble heart, and then God will begin to water it, and then often we see the fruit uh, after that. I mean, Ezra fasted, but he didn't have that spiritual victory until after they got to their destination. There was no attacks from bandits. Uh, same with Nehemiah. Uh, same with even Jesus. You know, we, we don't know what happened in the wilderness, but when he came out in the power of the spirit, then he began his ministry. So I think so many people focus on, man, why don't I have that spiritual high? Um, and, you know, that would be nice. And I do have that now and then. But for the most part, it's 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 pretty grueling. Uh, but I remind myself of we're training, we're preparing. Why do we prepare athletes prepare? But we don't we don't pray over. I mean, we don't um, strengthen ourselves in the Lord. Delayed gratification, fortitude, perseverance, discipline, seeking ahead even when we don't feel like it. So anyway, spiritually speaking, to sum it all up, I feel really good in the mornings. But by 10 a.m., 11, wow, yeah, it's just been hard. Uh, and then there's bursts of energies here and there. So my thought is uh, the difference people are asking, you say you say primarily water only. What about juice? Um, you know, like yesterday, I think I had... You know, I squeezed a half a grapefruit, mix it with some water, 40 calories. And then at night, a little bit of, of uh, Bragg's, um, I, don't, I think that's what it's called. Um, uh, the, um, what is that? Uh, oh, the very popular, I say it all the time, 
and I know I don't know what it is, but it's the uh, apple cider vinegar. And you put a little bit of Manuka honey and maybe uh, a little bit of water. And so another 30 calories or so. And, and, uh, but the difference is in juice fasting, I call it juice feasting or, or just having liquid only. You know, you're getting up having juice. You're having juice later on when you don't feel that well. It gets you through the day. You're having juice, you know, in the afternoon to get you through. You're having juice in the evening. So you're probably well over a thousand calories, 1200 calories in juice. To me, that's way too much fructose entering the system. It goes against autophagy for me, d- deep cellular healing, but it's not a bad idea. A friend of mine, Malachi O'Brien, shout out to him. I think, I think he's like approaching 40 days juice only. And the benefits are amazing, spiritually and physically. So, hey, if you can do that, I would encourage you to do it. I just know that wasn't for me. I, I know God wanted me to do a different kind of um, a, a fast. And I, I don't know how many days I'm going to go. I mean, my goal, and I haven't been saying this, but my goal is 40. It seems um, it seems a little, uh, I just try to go day by day because you, you think, okay, 10 more days. Oh, my goodness. I mean, we've got pancakes being made. My son made chocolate chip cookies, healthy ones. We've got Mexican food each night. My, my, they just got back from Costco and just, you know, but you're kind of dead to food. Um, and so that's a really good thing. I mean, I, I mean, it looks good. I could eat it, but it's much easier for me to say no to food than yes to food, uh, right now. So going 40 days is the goal, but praying about 45 because I want to go one day over every year. I disobeyed God. Uh, I remember. 2017, I started writing in my Bible, 40 day fast, 40 day fast, lots of confirmation. But you, you gotta be kidding me. There's no way I'm gonna do that. I mean, 40 days, that's, that doesn't work. Uh, and I'm gonna get to a couple questions about how you do that with a busy life. And it's not for everyone at all. You gotta take it to the Lord, see what He wants you to do. Um, so, uh, yeah, 30 days, 30 pounds. So down exactly 230 to 200. Uh, feel great physically, clothes fit really well. Um, and, and I think it's, I think it's okay to talk about the physical benefits. Everything feels better except my joints and my eyesight. And I, that has to do with retracing your body's retracing old energy, in, uh, uh, your body's retracing old in, 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 uh, injuries in order to repair. It's hard to talk sometimes with cotton mouth and I'm not drinking a lot of water just when thirst demands it. Um, so I feel great physically until around 11 AM, 12 AM. Then I have a real big downer. And just, uh, it's hard getting through the day. And I'm going to talk about that in just a minute on a busy life. But I want to answer one question that came in. Uh, why did Jesus say that this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting? You can actually Google my name with that title. And I preached a whole sermon on it. You know, the manuscripts are divided, whether it's the um, Texas Receptus, Alexander text, text from Antioch, uh, where, where, where the manuscripts came from, uh, Codex Sinaiticus, Codex Vaticanus, and and they differ because that verse, that fasting part is kind of left out, but other manuscripts, scripture, manuscripts, man, I'm glad when this, this cotton mouth is over, they have it in there. But then the early church fathers uh, wrote about this verse. And so we, we can look to them as well. But um, Jesus said this kind, now some say this kind of faith, uh, they had little faith, they're unbelieving. That's why that demonic demon wasn't, uh, wasn't expelled. Uh, but you know, the context, this kind, you look up that word kind, it seems to have to do with the demonic. Uh, you look up Strong's concordance of the, of the God, con, Strong's uh, concordance. You look up other commentaries. This kind, there, maybe there's a spiritual, uh, sometimes spiritual warfare. Uh, there's not a breakthrough until pressure is continually maintained, like an octopus, one tentacle at a time sometimes, like a stronghold, a wall, one brick at a time. And that's what prayer and fasting you keep just, you just keep beating down the enemy and beating down the enemy. And so I believe some strongholds, uh, do not come out easily without prayer and fasting because prayer is the communication with God. Prayer is the asking, the seeking, the, the petitioning and, and the spiritual warfare. And then fasting is denying the appetites of the flesh and silencing the voice of the flesh. And so you can be uh, full of the spirit, the fullness of the spirit. So anyway, um, another question came in. What about my busy life? Um, you know, everyone says to slow down during fasting. What do moms do? Um, what does that look like? Um, and so it is hard, the busy, you know, and just so many of you know, I've got five kids at home, all under 17. Um, we primarily homeschool. Um, I've got my son in sports. My daughter is in gymnastics. She's going to the national finals 
uh, this weekend, I'll be preaching at Rob McCoy's church Saturday morning and then back at our church for Sunday morning. Uh, we've got all types of meetings today. Um, I'm also managing the radio network. We've got tower issues up in Tonopah, Nevada, uh, trying to do things here in, in, up in Bishop Ridgecrest. And so I know what busy is. Um, so what I did is I prepared my heart, I prepared my mind, and if God calls me to do something, I know he's going to give me the strength to see it through. So, But you do have to make some changes. I, I removed a lot of things from my calendar, unless it was necessary. Um, you know, probably just going to be prepared to lay down if I need to. My wife uh, has been a huge blessing without her uh, and my kids actually uh, really supportive. I mean, that helps. That Without a supportive family, you know, it, it's really tough. And so she knows when I just, I, hey, I'm going to go lay down at four o'clock for a few hours because I'm just, I'm just not feeling well. You know, she allows that and she can handle some of the other things and just the office staff at the church. It's really a blessing. So on one hand, I believe you can fast even when you're busy, but you have to minimize uh, things that are not that relevant. Uh, maybe homeschooling mom, maybe wait till school's on break. Uh, maybe if you're working, can you take a vacation time? Oh, I don't want to blow my vacation on fasting. What do you want to blow it on? Uh, gluttony and, and wasting money. And I mean, so to me, health is vitally important. Um, and so, you know, you kind of schedule it in there. And if you can't just do water only, um, I don't rec, you know, it, Again, my books, Feasting and Fasting, and my other books you can get free on my church, on the church website. Uh, they answer all those questions free. And, and they would, they're, you know, a four hour book is going to answer a lot more than I can in four minutes. Um, but it depends what your goal is. If you're new to this, I would just begin with the 24 hours. 24 hours, I'm going to drink water. And you'll see it's, uh, it's interesting. And then you kind of build on that, Lord. What do you want me to do? I guarantee all of us can, can, can not eat for a little while. And, uh, you know, I, I, I had to, I had to eat every two and a half hours because my blood sugar level hypoglycemia come to, come to find out years ago, I was addicted to sugar and it's having so many carbohydrates, especially refined carbohydrates that really spike your insulin level. Insulin, you know, we all don't know, all know that uh, many of us do. I'll teach on that at the health seminar coming up May 21st. Um, come to find out, I just need to change my diet and begin to fast and allow my body to heal itself. Um, so that's what I would recommend is start out slow. Ask God. I mean, I know people, they say, Shane, God told me to just fast. I'm just going to have water only. And I talk to them. I see him like a week later. I'm like, how did you do that? No, no, no withdraws. And like, yeah, it wasn't too hard. You know, I'm, I just feel, I feel okay. And like, wow, praise God. I, I, I couldn't do that when I first started. So it depends where you're at. You know, if you're water fasting and you have to have some bone broth, a whopping 10 calories, you know, 20 calories, you get the sodium, potassium, potassium, magnesium, you get through it. See, to me, it's about falling forward. I haven't had solid food, you know, 30 days now, just about, I had a little bit on Easter. I think I talked about that. Um, and just falling forward, and, you know, and, and there's many days I just go water only, but if on a certain day, like I've got to have some manuka honey mixed with some, some, uh, grapefruit and water, you know, 50 calories and this big thing of water doesn't taste that great to kind of get through my meetings, get through the day, get through preaching. I don't think God's going, oh, man, Shane, you, you didn't listen to those those armchair quarterbacks on Facebook and social media. You know, you, you, you can't have xylitol in your gum. You can't have you can't have, uh, you know, 10 calories of bone broth. You That's not fasting. And it just don't even listen to the negative Nellies, judgmental Jerry's armchair quarterbacks. It's between you and God. So they, they don't really bother me. It just cracks me up because many of them are so legalistic and arrogant and they don't fast perfectly anyway. And if you do, if I, and I, I really have to go to a fasting clinic and just lay around all day and swim. And, um, even the Buchheimer, Buchheimer clinic in Germany, it's been around a hundred years. They have 250 calories a day, soup, and then a freshly squeezed juice at night. And those people are active there. So that's a good program too. So I would take it to the Lord. I can't tell you what to do, but deep healing occurs when you drink just water. Uh, your body. And then what happens is let's say you're drinking water, you're doing good and you have some juice. Your body's going to stop the detox process, stop the breakdown of tissues through autophagy, and it's going to begin to consume the glucose. So you, you kind of stop the, 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 the deep work and you, and you, your body feeds on the glucose. So that's why they say deep work water only. So it depends what your situation is. Um, but I'd rather get through this 40 days down almost 40 pounds, feeling great physically and spiritually. And even though I had a little bit of juice or bone broth along the way, I mean, give me a break. So don't let, don't listen to those people. I used to listen to those people too much. 
and uh, really can can sidetrack you. Um, let's see. Matthew 17 says it's a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a good point. I don't think we're, we're like, okay, I fasted. Now let me be a glutton after that, and then I'll fast January again. It, it really is a fasted lifestyle. Um, you, you won't see. That's why the disciples fasted. Jesus said, when you fast, when you give, when you pray. Uh, he also said, uh, when the bridegroom is taken away, my disciples will fast. So it's a, it's a, it's a lifestyle of denying the flesh. Granted, there's birthday parties or things, but I even like to once a week, man, just take 24 hours, deny the flesh, don't overindulge. And, and you're, it's a fasted lifestyle. Actually, did you know all of you fast and you actually break your fast at something called breakfast, breakfast, break fast. So I would continue, I would encourage you to continue that fasting. There's a lot of information out there about intermittent fasting and a slow win, uh, uh, a window that's not as big when you eat. And I'm going to talk about that on May 21st. There's some conflicting information on that. Um, but uh, anyway, let's see. Another question. Do we schedule in prayer and worship? Um, I would. I definitely would. Um, you know, put on your calendar. Make Put God as the priority. Um, and then, you know, obviously be flexible with that. If I can pray and worship, um, other times I will. Uh, let's see. I've got something in my eye here. Um, what do you do with all the spare time? Yeah, it depends on how you feel. Um, I mean, it's amazing when like food is no longer a part of your life. Like I, I don't need it today. I don't, I'm breakfast. I don't want it, lunch, dinner. So you do have a lot more time than you realize. And what I've been doing, I've got a couple good books out. I've got Andrew Murray on humility and prayer. I've got Gordon Cove, his book on, uh, revival now through prayer and fasting. I've got William Grinnell. Uh, Puritan on uh, the full armor of God and and A.W. Tozer. And so I'll just sit down a lot of times and read and read the Bible and, and pray. And But when I'm not feeling good, I probably just try to w- listen to some worship and lay down and just really see God. And then that, that really helps as well. Um, so, yeah, you do, you do, you'd have to be kind of a good steward of your spare time. That's another, you know, big, big topic out there is fasting clinics. And I don't blame them, say, from Alan Goldhammer, to uh what's that guy in costa rica can't remember his name either um it'll probably come to me um yeah but he just recommends only eating fruit your whole life and so the you get yeah yeah you can't get too crazy out there so um oh lauren lockman lauren lockman alan goldhammer you know they 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 you just rest and don't do anything where in germany at the buchheimer they have some physical activity and so the reason that is questionable is because if you're going to a fasting clinic or you're trying to get some deep healing through, you know, uh, hardcore diabetes, you know, you're, you've got some cancer diagnosis, you've got some, um, you've got some, uh, central nervous, central, uh, yeah, nervous, uh, uh, types of issues, Parkinson's or memory, and you want to just rest. Why? Because as you're resting, the body is healing itself. So when I get up and engage, let's say I go on a half hour bike ride right now. Number one, where's the energy going to come from? Your body usually doesn't assimilate fat that quick into ketones. Uh, it has to move it to the triglyceride, this, this three strand onto the glycerol and all that stuff you don't even know. But the bottom line is my body's probably going to take from the muscle and it's going to do something called gluconeogenesis. It's going to create glucose from my protein. And then I'll, I'll lose weight, but it's really not the weight I wanted to lose. And so activity, you know, unless you're wanting to lose a lot of weight, you know, I would try not to be too active. I mainly stretch, you know, just kind of keep some, keep a little bit of activity going. Uh, and again, ans- ans- ask your questions in the comments line. Uh, what about juicing versus water? I think I explained that if you want to rewind uh, the benefits. Uh, well, the benefits of, I'd say, juicing are... You know, obviously you can, you can do it some type of deep clean, but I would recommend more green organic juices that don't taste that great because you don't want a lot of that sugar from the fructose. So if I make, let's say a grapefruit juice in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, you know, in a thing that you twist and, and you make the juice, whatever that's called. Um, and I, that's about 50 calories. And so if I mix another cup of water with it and I drink that throughout the day, 
you know, it's not going to raise the, the blood sugar levels. And that's what's, that's really what's happening in our nation. It's what, what diabetes insulin resistant means that the, the cells are no longer taking the insulin. So you're resistant to insulin and the glucose can't get into the cells to do its work. So the glucose is running through our blood, causing havoc from eyesight to uh, to all types of diabetes symptoms. That's why people sometimes have to get their feet amputated and getting overweight. So we have to really get our, our lives under control in this area of, of refined carbohydrates. And I'm going to talk about all of this May 21st, 2022. You can follow us here on, on Facebook. You can come in person. I'm going to talk for a few hours on this, this area of health and fitness. To me, it's vitally important. Vitally important. I can't tell you how many emails we get weekly where people say no pastors talking about this. And I, you know, I don't blame most pastors. That's not their primary calling. A lot of them don't know really, you know, a lot about health and fitness. It's something God has given me and, and it's part of my calling. So instead of shooting brother, shooting brother, we should all be thankful for different callings. But I do cringe when churches are serving coffee and donuts to those people who are dying from overconsumption. It's, uh, but, but you know, you don't want to get legalistic about it. I understand that, but I, I would probably offer something a little bit different. So anyway, uh, any other questions? The amount of sugar per household is insane. Oh yeah. Compared to 50 years ago. Um, you know, I think don't quote me on it, but I think, you know, let's even say a hundred years ago, I think six, six tablespoons, I'm sorry, six teaspoons of sugar, you know, put that in your hand, six teaspoons was the normal and it was hard to get sugar. Uh, and they actually, I think most of that sugar was probably from honey or even maple syrup. Did you know maple syrup from a tree is pretty good, but now it's, it's so processed that you're probably having 10, 15 times the, the level of sweetness and see our body isn't designed. That's, that's definitely a, it, it's, it's, it's an addiction. It's a neurological high from dopamine, different things from sugar. So we're addicted to sugar and we are paying the price. And now I think we're at least 40, 40. 40 teaspoons of sugar easily. I mean, I added up once and I was, I was amazed. Okay. I put, you know, two servings of ketchup on something. Okay. I just got eight grams of sugar in ketchup, two teaspoons of, of sugar in my ketchup. Then I made a, a almond butter sandwich with Ezekiel bread and grabbed some organic jelly. And I'm like, another eight grams of sugar, jelly, jelly, jelly. Why don't you just have strawberries. You don't need to have added sugar to jelly. This is insane. And so by the time it's lunchtime, I'm already up to, uh, what, 16. And the Ezekiel bread didn't have any, but if you have some milk, you count the lactose. I don't know if you want to count the lactose, but say by the time you're at lunch, you're already at, uh, you know, five, six teaspoons of sugar. Not to mention if you put anything in your coffee, if you drink a sports drink, if you uh, uh, go by Starbucks, I mean, we are, this is, Sugar is causing major, major problems. Uh, and so you can switch to like monk fruit. Um, you know, and, and believe, believe it or not with fasting, man, my, my, the sweetness now, um, I, I forgot what I had. Something with stevia in it and even it's just too much. Or even if you have just even, even the manuka honey, if I add that with the, the uh, apple cider vinegar, I have to put in a lot of water because it's just too sweet. And so what fasting that does, it also resets your, um, resets your uh taste buds and everything becomes your sight your smell you know your your everything is improved by that so tina barbara any questions rachel any questions john Myrna, a lot of people watching so if you have any questions put them in the um uh comment section i'll try to get to them i think we have another one here um oh yeah i already talked about that why people are wondering why do you mainly talk about the physical benefits of fasting and not to reiterate everything I already said, but the physical benefits are evident. They are happening now because your body's, that, that's the whole purpose of fasting is it's happening now. Um, and the changes are incredible. And I think it motivates people. Uh, my kids are motivated. My wife's motivated. Others are emailing me. Hey, how, how, how are you doing this? I just got diagnosed with high blood pressure, diabetes. Aren't we supposed to steward this incredible gift that God gave us, that being our body? 
So if I don't talk about it, it's no big deal. Have coffee and donuts. Let me be 240 pounds, 50, 60 pounds overweight. Let me try to get through a sermon. I don't want to go visit someone in the hospital. I don't want to, I'm tired. I just need to get home. I mean, what an unproductive life that is. And so I think it's, I, I, I'm actually more convinced that God wants us to take care of our body more than ever before, especially as our healthcare system just plummets. So I'm talking about the physical benefits because they are evident. And uh, I believe God wants me to share that. I have no conviction whatsoever. The spiritual benefits, I believe, are going to come later. You just All you're doing is planting the seed, planting the seed, planting the seed. And you can look at any fast in the Bible. Usually there was an immediate fast. Esther fasted for three days. Then the the, the, the blessing came. Uh, Jesus, I mentioned already, already Ezra, Nehemiah. Uh, you've got other people fasting in the in the Bible, and usually the the blessing comes after the fact. And sometimes spiritual things are very private. You know, God, it's in the mornings have been incredible uh, worship and just in the Word. And and sometimes if I don't get in the Word because I'm just into worship and God's just pouring my heart, then I'll put the Bible aside and get to it later in the day when I have some time to sit down with it. Or maybe it's just more of the Bible in the morning. So I'm trying to be flexible in that area. Uh, let's see. Any other questions coming in? Uh, let's see. Let's see. If our willpower is very weak, how can we go from long fa- or how can we do long fasting? Do we need to cultivate habits to sustain long fasting? Uh, and yeah, I want to point you again to the books on our website for free. I, I'm not promoting books because they're free. So, but they can they can cover a hundred times more things than I'm covering right now. Trying to answer this quickly, but yeah, willpower is um, you know that's why I failed and fast before, and I. You know, it, it just, it's hard. I want to start. I'm a day into it, two days, and I'll oh, forget it. My wife says, oh, I knew you would make it. So, you know, I think I've tried to fast more times than I've actually fasted. So genuine willpower comes from the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's love, joy, peace, contentment, gentleness, long-suffering, self-control. And, and, and willpower, I believe God does give us power over our will. I believe that we can say no to temptation, and, but there is, you'll have to bear that temptation as God provides a way of escape. So instead of saying, I don't have willpower, I need to say, Lord, I need help with my willpower. I do have willpower by the, by the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, I want to seek you. I want to make this decision. Will you help me? And then you step out in faith. You begin to go your 10, 11, 12, 14, 16 hours. Oh man, you cave and you, you have a drink of orange juice and, and you start to cry because you blew it. No, 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 no. Just say, Hey, well, that little bit of orange juice refresh me. I don't want it. Lord, I'm get, I'm back on track and you just keep falling forward. You keep falling forward. Now I'm not giving permission to, for people to go and blow it. But see, the problem is the reason why most people don't succeed in fasting, why they never reach their goal is because they're striving for perfection rather than direction. So, oh, uh, what about an alcoholic? You know, I, I, man, recently talked to guys who've went one, you know, over a year, another guy seven years and they blew it and they got, went, went to the liquor store having a fight with their spouse. And I said, okay, listen, you blew it. The devil gave you right hook. It's over. Get back on track. Get back on track. Why, why, why keep going down the rabbit hole? And sadly though, most of the times they keep going down the rabbit hole and they get farther into that depravity because shame and guilt and things come in. So my thought is step out in faith and fast, 